This is the Sunday Business Page with John Delano. Good morning, I'm John Delano. Welcome to another home edition of the Sunday Business Page. And our very special guest today is Buddy Hobart, who is the founder and CEO of Solutions 21. And Buddy, thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, John, thank you. I wanted to talk to you about a subject that you know a lot about, millennials. And we'll say right up front, you and I are both baby boomers, but you actually work and study in this area of uh, hiring and retention of employees. Let me first ask you, what exactly is Solutions 21? We're a, a leadership development firm. So we work with organizations on how are they developing that next level of leadership, that, that, that next group of, of talent. And so you're perfectly placed to help us understand a little more about millennials. And for definitional purposes, I take it these are folks who are age 40 down to 25. Is that about right? About right. Yep. Yep. So born between 1980 and 2000. Yep. And, you know, we hear so many negative things about millennials, that they're not very good workers, that they have their own agenda. They want lots of free time and vacation time. They want to engage in their social causes. I mean, is any of this true? I don't think so, John. Uh, I, I think those are myths. I think those a lot of urgent, uh, urban legends. I think that we grab onto one story that kind of hits this myth and we go with it. I, I, I think that's just a, a myth, uh, as there were myths on all generations, actually. Including on baby boomers. Absolutely. I, I show a clip when I'm talking to folks that is from Dragnet, from 1966, and by the way, Joe Friday is beating up on you and I, who are the baby boomers sitting there in the room. And when I play the clip, it sounds exactly like how you opened up the, the myths about baby boomers. It's, it's pretty funny. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, what they say about millennials, they say about all of us. Um, but I think it's important that as millennials move into leadership positions in companies that, and we heard about this great resignation of people leaving and moving around a lot from company to company. What's your advice on how to retain millennials and maybe others as well? Well, I, I think and that's a great, let me add that, that, that your footnote there, maybe others as well, because millennials really don't want anything special. They are just kind of voting with their feet and they're kind of demanding what everybody wants. It's not that they just want it, everybody wants a good leader. And so there's a huge conversation on the demographics of why this is happening, but very little conversation of what to do about it. And, and the reality is that developing your leaders, people quit people. And so the great resignation is a, a wake up call for us to look in the mirror. Are we providing the right leadership to our employees? So everybody wants this, John, it's not just the millennials. And um, you know, the other thing I think that we need to think about is this isn't new. Like, I mean, this has been going on for literally hundreds of years. We went from farms to cities, from cities to suburban, back to cities, but now we're just in a remote world with a generation that has grown up with this technology. You and I, we're technology immigrants. We weren't born with this technology. This is the first generation that was born with this technology. And this is no different than any other of the business situations or any of the workforce migrations, now we're migrating to a, to a, 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 a remote workforce that, are, that have other demands and other needs. And, we, and only, we, yeah, we only have about 45 seconds. Is there one key piece of advice on how to keep millennials, how leaders keep millennials? I, I think there is. I think we need to reframe the situation. We need to determine if you do a quick math, someone gets a $5,000 raise. That's like a good lunch every day. As leaders, we need to determine, is working for us more valuable than that good lunch every day? And we need to reframe that if we're losing the folks, the first place we look is not at those folks. We look in the mirror as leaders. Well, Buddy Hobart, I can't thank you enough for joining us this morning on the Sunday Business Page. Good advice and very interesting topic. We could go on, I'm sure, a lot longer. Thank you, sir, for being with us. Thank you for having me. And thank you for watching this edition of the Sunday Business Page. Have a great Sunday, everybody.